And we are underway from Houston. This taken in right around the goal line. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. The Steelers offense set for their first possession here, and it's Kenny Pickett who will lead the way, the second-year man, Charles, from Pitt. Pickett didn't quite lead Pittsburgh to the promised land in his first season as the hometown kid and franchise quarterback, but he did impress once he got on the field. Winning seven games helped keep the vaunted streak of non-losing seasons alive in the Steel City. Meanwhile, Pickett's throw pulled in by Robinson here. And this will go as a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. Second and three at the 30-yard line. Second down and three. Looking to throw, pick it. That'll be taken in there by Miles Boykin. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. And a quick slant gets exactly 10, and by the nose of the football, they've got a first down. So the completion there, Charles, looking at this defense, certainly in for a tough task here this afternoon. What are some of the keys for them if they want to come out on top? Well, the first thing, partner, is they just allow the completion there. They don't want to get a string of those going. Let him get his confidence. Let him get into the rhythm of the game, the flow of the game, and all of a sudden, he's feeling like he can do no wrong. You want to really get after his timing a little bit, knock a few balls away, and make things uncomfortable for him, because if he feels relaxed, you are in for a tough afternoon. This is second and eight. Pick it. Throwing middle, and it's complete. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 49-yard line. Pick it back to throw. And returning right back to Boykin. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Consecutive catches for him. That good for 11. Well, they clearly wanted to come out, Charles, and be aggressive throwing the football, and they've been pretty efficient along with that aggressiveness. He's now 4-4 on this opening drive. Yeah, and that's led to a fresh set of downs. I like what he's doing back there. You can tell he's at ease. Feels good about what he's doing. I think if I'm the play caller, I'm reading that. I'm continuing to let him throw the football. Brought down in the play by the linebacker, Christian Harris. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play, stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback and makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. Now again, it's Harris on second down. And he'll follow his blockers there all the way down to the 23-yard line. That one good for 14 yards and a Steeler first. That's a very nice game there. A confidence-building run. Love the execution up front. And the way he pressed the hole, absolutely perfect. To the air on first down with Pickett. And that is incomplete. And that might have been a situation where even though you don't hit on the deep throw, you at least put in the defender's minds early in the game that we're going to press the ball deep against your secondary. And that can have a ripple effect on how they function throughout. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Pickett sets up play action. This is caught. And in for the Steelers touchdown. Allen Robinson, 23 yards for the touchdown. And the Steelers are on the board first here this afternoon. They got to love that. Nine-play drive results in six points. That means they're doing the dictating. That means that they've described how the game's going to go. They're playing at their tempo, at their pace. If you're on the other side of the ball, if you're playing defense, defense is not methodical. They've got to go in there and shake things up and create a little havoc. Boswell good with the extra point, and that makes the score 7-0.
Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. This taken in at the goal line. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. So here are the Texans now with a fresh face at quarterback. The second overall pick from Ohio State, C.J. Stroud. In only two seasons, Stroud showed all he needed to at Ohio State. All-American, Heisman Finals, program records galore. He looked every bit like the number one overall pick. He went number two, but Houston is thrilled to have him. A oh, man coming off a great rookie year. It's Damian Pierce. And that to the 30. It'll be second down. Brandon, to me, what's important right here on this drive is for them to get at least two first downs. They've got to give their defense a chance to settle down, catch their breath a little bit after they give up a touchdown on the opening drive. Ball on the 30 now. Here's a second and seven. Let's keep those sticks moving. And Pierce gets it again on second down. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That good for 22 on a first down. Pierce with a motivated run there, and no surprise he's motivated this season after a late injury robbed him of a thousand yard campaign last year, and potentially the rookie of the year. Even still, the fourth round pick outplayed his slot with over 900 yards in 13 games. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 48-yard line. First and 10, it's Pierce. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Line of scrimmage, the 43 on second and four. Now Stroud. And that'll be incomplete. Well, he left no doubt about that one because even though he hasn't left the pocket, he's got a receiver in the area, so it's not grounding, even though there was no way that ball was going to be caught. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Here's Stroud. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man to play. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 30. The third down conversion is successful. Give them 12 yards that time. Solid opening drive so far, Charles. They've moved this football into field goal range, but you know that they want to cap this off with six and not three. Absolutely. As one of the better coaches in the league always tells me, on offense, I want their body blows all game long and finish it with uppercuts. Well, here are the body blows right now. He's hoping one uppercut will take care of the end of this drive. Ready for the second quarter from Houston. It's the Texans in possession of the football. So first and 10 now from the 30, as they've got it as we resume action. Back to the ground with Pierce. Heck of a broken tackle and able to work this down near the 23. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. I know the toss play begins with the guy taking the snap and turn around and tossing it to the runner, but where the real intrigue is, can they seal the edge, whether it's an offensive tackle or a tight end in the direction they want to run the football? If they do that, that's the result that you get, that type of a game. If they don't, oftentimes it's not a very successful play. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 12-yard line. Getting 11 yards at time and a new set of downs. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Stroud looking to throw toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Oh, they were so close. That close to their first points of the game. Just needed to hang on just a second longer, but he couldn't complete the process of the catch through the jostling from the defender. Second and ten. Again on second down, it's Stroud. Over the middle, that's caught by Mechie. Five yards, now it's third and five. Yeah. They'll 
They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Flag comes in. This might be a free play. And he takes it into the end zone across the chalk. Now there is a flag down, but I think that's offsides on the defense. Yeah, I think that's going to stand, partner. Offside. Defense. So obviously they will decline the penalty there, and the result is six points. Kaimi Fairbairn on for the extra point. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. A 10-play drive that time, and it results in the Texans finding the end zone. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. So both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now. But this offense, they just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent offer a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth if you don't think there's some momentumship going on right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. They're going to try the jet sweep. Robinson with it. He gets away from one. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. That one good for 14 yards and a stealer first. I think the reason this play is so successful is not just the blocking at the point of attack, but how about the speed at which he takes the handoff? He's in motion already, so he's not coming from a flat start like a running back often is. He's at a full run by the time he gets the football. First and 10, here's Pickett. Pass complete, George Pickens with it. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Two yards to go, second down. Back to throw, Pickett. Over the middle, it's complete. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 37. 11 yards there as they connect on the quick slant. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. Pick it to throw on first down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. Now a second and ten. Here's Pickett. Man open is Robinson. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 14. Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. They'll throw again with Pickett. And he's got it. And the Steelers are going to have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the three-yard line. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender, and that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. They come out with one back and three tight ends. Harris. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. 
just power football there down near the goal line. Give it to him. He's able to push his way across. Yeah, they went heavy there. Sometimes you have those big offensive linemen come in, have to report like they're eligible. But all they're doing is getting a good stance, blocking, and getting their runner across the goal line. Extra point put through by Boswell. And that makes the score 14 to 7. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. Taken at the goal line. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. So now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game. And now with still more than a minute to go in what's been a tight game, you figure we'll try to see them move the ball downfield. Remember, they get the kickoff to start the second half, so this is a golden opportunity for them to go down there and put up a couple of sixes back-to-back. -back. What a momentum swing that would be. Yeah, you might be able to get a two-for-one without ever even giving up the football. Now, how about that? Defensive coordinator perfectly in sync, dials up a blitz, and the man in the middle, he's the one who gets home. Big Mike. Big Mike. He's got a man complete. He's to the 15. Touchdown, Houston. Robert Woods taking it in. And the Texans are an extra point away from tying the ball game here in the final minute of the first half. Well, partner, I mean, if anybody was still questioning whether or not he had an NFL caliber arm, I think you could toss that right out the window. That was a heck of a throw right there. I would agree totally. Question it no more. This rookie, big time throw right there. Great poise, stepped up, trusted he could lay it in there perfectly, and he knew that his guy was going to make the catch on the other end. Nice collaboration. Extra point by Fairbairn, up and good. And that is going to tie our game as we approach halftime. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. The Steelers taking over now late in this first half. And they've got a little under 40 seconds to go if they want to try to put something together here. On first and 10, it's Pickett. His throw incomplete. That open man that time, they ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Once again, they'll go from the 23-yard line on second and 10. Now pick it. A short one there to fire move. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as they stop it with 28 seconds to go in the first half of play. Here now, third and a yard. Pickett will look to throw it here. He's going to get that to his run back out of the backfield. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. A little surprise pays off on third and one. Pass instead of run. Gets him 15 yards. I'm not sure that that was necessarily a safety valve or a check down throw on third down. Sometimes just try and find the open guy and get him the ball. He did exactly that and found a way to pick up a first down. Pick it now on first down. It's caught. 
Inside the 25. And down to the 20 he'll go before heading out of bounds. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. Well, partner, that's how you make a long drive suddenly not so long anymore. One big play, and they're already in field goal range with designs on getting more than that. Pick it. He'll look to throw it. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. They'll look to throw again. And he's going to take it in for a Steeler touchdown. Kenny Pickett in the final seconds of the first half. And the Steelers have taken the lead here in the final stages of this first half. So, Charles, that's three touchdowns on three drives, and it's just been an offensive barrage so far. Great word, partner, using barrage right there. I'm going to add another word if you don't mind. How about perfection? No surprise that they're leading right now. Absolute dominance throughout this ball game, and no signs of slowing down. Boswell good with the extra point, and the lead is now 21-14. So six seconds, all that remains of this first half as the kick is away. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. The final second ticks by, and that's going to do it for the first half of play. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports halftime report. We got a fine first half out of the former Alabama man, Najee Harris. He wound up finding the end zone on a touchdown run to help give his guys the advantage here at the break. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. The Texans down on the scoreboard, but they do get the first crack here as we are back underway in the second half. And he will not bring it out. It's a touchback. The Texans going to take over here to start quarter number three. But Charles, in that first half, we saw a fair amount of offense on both sides of the football, and now the team trailing here will start with it in the third quarter. And we both know this coach pretty darn well, don't we? Because his game planning is always on point. And now that he's getting the ball to start the second half, how about all the offense that you already referenced in the first half? They'll put that all together and come out with something really strong, I believe, to get things going here in the third quarter. Not too shabby for his first carry of the game. That's exactly what most teams are looking for, a really good change of pace back. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and 10. Throwing now is Stroud. He's got his man, that's Woods, on the out route. But that's what you're looking for when you're wanting to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who could not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. Second and five. 
Singletary going to get the handoff. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. Well, we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. He's got his target. That's complete. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 30. Give them 17 on the pick up there, and the Texans also get a new set of downs. So he turned to a trusted, familiar face in that third down situation. It paid off. Yeah, you go to your veteran receiver in that spot, so you can't underestimate him when he's on the field defensively. Make sure you know where he is because he understands how to get open in key situations. Now left side, a completion to his tight end. Call it a gain of six on the play, and that'll bring up second down. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches, as we just saw him do there, because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that in-line point-of-attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days, but you can flex him out. You can run a wide receiver between him. You can make him a primary target. Defense. He was held without a catch in the first half, but he's got one here, and he also picks up a first down. Stroud. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. After all the preparation, all the practice, a play like that will actually break your heart. They had everything they wanted just unable to complete it in the end zone, a big time drop. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and 10. Stroud sets up the play action. And got his man, it's caught. Touchdown, Houston. Dalton Schultz, a 16 yard touchdown. And the Texans are an extra point away from evening this one up. There was a lot of zip on that pass, and baseball might have called that a frozen rope. I like it when you bring the diamond into the game. I'm going back to the gridiron. Had some heat on that bad boy. Sometimes you throw a touchdown pass, and sometimes you throw, what, a touchdown strike? There you go. That's my man in concert. Fairbairn good with the extra point, and we are tied at 21. So we're right back where we started, all even as the kick's away. Taking it about the one. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. Time for the Steelers' offense now to get set for their first possession of half number two. After that last touchdown we just saw, Charles, we got ourselves a brand new ball game all tied here in the third as they have their first possession of this second half. And Brandon, this drive is all about one word to me, and that's the word answer, because they're trying to answer the momentum the other offense picked up in tying the game, because not only if they score and they feel better about themselves, they'll retake the lead and maybe set the tone for the rest of the half, keeping them in the driver's seat. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Pick it. And his throw here is incomplete. Timing's crucial in any route thrown, but when you throw an out, so many things are going through the mind of the receiver. Catching the ball, timing it up with the quarterback. Are my feet going to get down in bounds? On that play, all those things going through his head might have caused him to drop it. Throwing on third down. Here's Pickett. Escaping the pressure right. And that'll be incomplete with a penalty flag here on the field. And I'm not sure he was still behind the line when he let that thing go. So since that last play got nothing, they'll go ahead and decline the penalty. And that forces a fourth down situation. 
The Steelers send out their punter now. And surprisingly, this is the first punt of the game for either team. It's a 42-yard punt. They keep him to just a yard on the return. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. Robert Woods and the Texans back out there. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. How many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. From the 43, here's second and six. And Pierce gets it again on second down. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. 48 yards rushing for him now on just six carries to this point. Most of their damage has been done through the air. I mean, they've run the bell three times with passing touchdowns, but guess what? Ground game has not been neglected. Nice little burst right there. And they'll go right back to Pierce. And just one yard here from the 49 to the 50. Sometimes you're aligned perfectly and the play comes to you, and sometimes you got to cover some ground to go make the play as we just saw there. We saw a great, great example of perseverance right there on that play. Got to be careful. They might want to throw one over his head as this game progresses. Final minute now of the third quarter. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. It'll be complete to Mechie. And not able to get any further as he's taken down right there on the 30. So they'll, of course, decline the pass interference there and wisely take the yardage. And I think defensively he's saying, I was getting away with that in the first half. Why are you making that call now? But to me, that one was pretty easy to see. I don't understand what he's upset about. I think it was the correct call. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. Slot man moves right. And Pierce gets it again on second down. And he'll go down, and that will do it. Three quarters have come and gone. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. All even as we get ready to start the fourth. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. Gets the dump off to Pierce. It'll be a gain of just a yard at its second down. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it can turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal game. Now second and nine. You got to score right now. On second down, here's Pierce. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. It's a four-yard pickup there, and it leaves him with third and five. But if you're going to have a relay race, you're probably going to pick your backs and receivers to run it, but don't underestimate the conditioning of the offensive line. They're out there just dictating things, staying on the field, and keeping a long drive going. On third down, they go with Singletary, and he is going to lose yardage here. A five-yard loss there is going to bring up fourth down. Have to kick this field goal, don't you? No question about it. Look at the clock. Look at the situation. Kick the field goal. So the field goal unit is on the field, as this is a big spot right here. This to break our fourth quarter tie. The kick by Fairbairn is good, and they have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. So he waited on the sideline for his first chance in the ball game, and it didn't come until the fourth quarter, but he connects there, a big one to give him the lead. Boy, you talk about coming in cold. I don't care how many times you kick it into a net. You're not really ready when you go out there and all that beef is coming at you trying to block the kick. Big spot, and he delivers. Fairbairn now following the main 
field goal. He'll send this one away. Austin elects to bring this out of the end zone. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. And the Steelers getting set and ready for their next possession. And now they find themselves trailing following the field goal. Still a good amount of time in this fourth quarter, but this drive very well could determine the outcome of this ball game. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Under four to go now as the clock runs and they come up on second down. Pickett sets up play action. Under pressure and the Texans able to get in there for the sack. Credit Corey Littleton blowing that play up. They tried to get a little play action there, but nobody on the defensive side bit. Yeah, they adjusted in time and in a big way and ultimately got the sack on offense. Sometimes you run play action just to set up a certain blocking technique. In this case, none of it worked. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Looking to throw. Pick it. And that will be incomplete. Send out their punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. That's taken at around the 40. Now a hit and a loose football. And they'll take over inside the 45 at the 44 yard line. And now hang on here. The door, can you hear it? It's, it's, it's a little open. Or is that the squeaky hinges that I'm hearing right now? And now, as with every potential turnover, they're going to take a second look at this just to make sure. Previous play is under review. Now, the question, was the knee, in fact, down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of the football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. A little less than four minutes remaining, and the margin for error is small with this slim lead. Accurate within your four-minute offense here, Charles? Definitely. Remember, the four-minute offense doesn't always correspond to what's up on the clock. What they need to do is play a little bit of keep away right now. Run the clock down. Make sure their opponent doesn't get the ball back. Their dream scenario, get enough first downs and make them eat up their timeouts so the game ends when you're kneeling down with the football. And Pierce gets it again on second down. And they'll get this just to the 47, one-yard gain. Now the objective there, I mean, yes, the positive gain, that's nice, but work some clock. Yeah, you're exactly right, but the problem for them is still within a possession, so they can't just sit on it running the ball. They'll have to find a way to throw it effectively as well. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So it's Texans football as we welcome you back. They're facing a critical third down now as they try to hold on to this lead. Pierce will try to pick it up. Well, he appears to be about two feet short on third and three. Leaves him with a fourth and one. The Texans send the punter out, as he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. So here's Pickett and the Steelers. Down 24-21, a minute 50 to play. They need, at minimum, three points out of this as they come up first and 10. They'll start the drive with Harris. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. 
partner, they're clearly saving those timeouts, but they still have to work with some urgency to put themselves in the right position. Here's second down. Now pick it. That's to Fryer move. And Fryer move going to have a Steelers first down as the tackle made right at the 30 yard line. Obviously, a big first down right there. Yeah, they still got to hustle. They got to get up to the line of scrimmage and get set. But I don't think necessarily you need to spike it. But they've got to continue to move quickly. Plenty of time and two timeouts still at their disposal. First and ten here. He's going to let it fly. And incomplete on the deep ball. Inside a minute to go. Here's second and ten now. Pickett to throw. He's got Pickens complete. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. But following the play now, they're going to stop the clock here as a man is shaken up. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. They'll come up first and ten here. Looking to throw here. Pick it. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. They'll come up now. This is second and long. Here's Pickett. He's got his man downfield. It's Robinson. Yeah, he's got this to the 30 before being taken down. What my dad would say sometimes, I'm just scratching my head here trying to figure out what was going on there defensively. How did you lose him in the middle of the field? If you're going to lose a receiver, Make sure it's someone on the short side of things, not deep downfield, that can hurt your defense. Now pick it. And that is incomplete. Down to 15 seconds now. But well, this defense has been physical all game long, and it certainly looks like they're not going to back off and make things any easier. They want to keep making life miserable for the receivers all the way to the end. They'll try again here. Second and ten. On second down, this is Harris. Might have gotten this one down to the 28, and that's all. And whistles, and they take their final timeout with seven seconds left. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. This to potentially send us to overtime. And here come the whistles and a timeout with seven seconds left. So Pickett is off to the sideline, and Chris Boswell is on for the Steeler field goal try. This to tie things up in the final minute. And the former Rice Al Boswell puts this one through in his return to Houston. And they will tie this game here in the final seconds. So a money kick there in the final seconds. And now, barring any hijinks on the kickoff here, partner, I think you and I, we're going to settle in for a little overtime. And I wouldn't have it any other way. This has been a dogfight all through regulation. No reason to think it won't continue in the extra period. So overtime on the horizon, barring a wild finish here as the kick's away. And we need overtime to decide this. 
this one after four quarters of play. We're all even. The extra session in a moment. This is the NFL on EA Sports. So the Texans will have the first opportunity here in the overtime session as we are back underway. This taken in at the goal line. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled into 20. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. And the points, they have come fast and furious in this quarter. You really don't want to be on the defensive side of the ball right now, do you? Because you're either thinking, my replacement may get an opportunity. <laughs> Your head better be on a swivel. Totally. Or maybe I just need to get out of the game for a while because I just can't slow these guys down. They've got to figure out a way to disrupt these offenses. And typically, one guy makes a big play, and that can help change things. They'll be looking for disruption on both sides right now. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. First throw of overtime, Stroud. He finds his man, complete. That's Beck. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. That one unable to develop, never got going. A loss of a couple, and it's second down. I think he tried to fool him on that one. You know, being able to throw the ball to the fullback position, no one was fooled on that play. No, lost yardage. You think they should yank that one from the playbook, at least for the time being? <laughs> I, think, I think what you do is you take it out and you evaluate it next week in practice. Stroud's throw pulled in by Woods. So the completion results there in nine yards. And now we've got a third and three. Coming up here, looking for three yards to pick up the first. Now here's Stroud on third down. And a find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Texans first down as he'll be marked down a yard or two past the marker following a gain of six. This is a big spot for a rookie QB in overtime. It's kind of where you earn your stripes, isn't it? It really is. And we've talked with enough coaches and players about how these youngsters are getting into the game and playing this at such a high level so early. But overtime, that's an entirely different animal, and he's handling it well. He's starting to put together a nice drive. And he is brought down, but now before reaching the third. Ten yards rushing for him now as he was just trying to win his guys to an overtime victory. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon, and I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 30-yard line. First down, they go right back to Pierce to about the 26 here. They've had some success here in overtime of this opening drive running the football right back to that well. And why not? When you have that kind of success, make them stop you. And until they do, keep going back to that well you just spoke about. I think there's more water there and available to them. Second down and six now from the 26. Now Stroud. Over the middle, he gets it to Collins. Seven as this long drive continues and the chains move again, shaping up to be a very efficient opening drive here at the top. And can you feel the tension building? Because I'm feeling it. All right, I've got the I've got the sweaty palms here with each play because of the enormity of what's going on. Each play means so much in overtime, and they're handling it well as this drive continues. Another one caught by Collins. And the Texans are going to have a first and goal as he's taken down at about the eight-yard line. Defensively now, the ultimate challenge, of course, if Wong gets in the end zone, this thing's over. And I remember my coach has always talked about in goal line situations, and now you're in overtime where they have to keep them to three points. Otherwise, this thing is done. Win your individual battle within the framework of the team defense. Beat that guy across from you. And it is caught. Touchdown, Texans.
Well, to put it mildly, he's been able to dice up this secondary all game long, and this time, that was a missile that he threw into the end zone and adding another touchdown to his ledger. And I think we see these youngsters develop a lot quicker than we ever have because when they get started in this game, they're not just throwing passes around. They're reading coverages early. So now they're like seasoned pros earlier in their career. How about this one here? If they win this ball game, a game ball definitely coming from his head coach. Touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. Austin elects to bring this out of the end zone. And this return will net positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you, you, you described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't want to see the field goal kicker try on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Here's second and ten. Pick it, back to throw. He's got this to Pickens. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. Now after the holding call, here's second and 20. Here's Pickett. And he's going to be brought down. Back in his own six-yard line. That was Will Anderson getting home and finishing the play. Now a timeout called for by the offense. They'll be down to just one remaining as we step aside here in overtime. Now third down and very long. Back to throw, pick it. And going deep downfield for Boykin. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Two things you can do in that situation. Run and punt the football or try to take your shot and get in the first down. They chose the latter, but they'll have to punt all the same. A big call here in overtime. They're going for it on fourth down. Here we go, it's Pickett on fourth down. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Steelers try it, but they come up empty on fourth down. And now, boy, the ball's going to go over on downs here inside the 10-yard line. Well, certainly not the way that they were hoping that possession would end, failing to convert on fourth. And now they've got to make sure that they keep their poise, they keep their confidence. Just because it didn't work once doesn't mean if they get that same situation later that they shouldn't go for it again. The defense feels great, but the offense, they can't be despondent. So this one in the win column for the Texans, and it was their quarterback who led the way, Charles. Pretty impressive play for a rookie. Yeah, sometimes you just have those games where everything's clicking, and this was one of those days. He wound up with four touchdown passes on the afternoon. He was large and in charge all day long. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our